as a view I always miss. Last day here, or last night here in Singapore, day's almost over. Final meal, it's gotta be Singapore chili crab and black pepper crab. I'm meeting a new friend, ooh, that traffic's bad. Meeting a new friend and getting some chili crab. Last dinner. Man, it's kind of like time flew by while I was here. But seriously, that, that traffic is looking bad, I gotta go. All right. Here with Dion, she's a popular anchor in San Francisco with ABC, right? ABC, yeah. This is her husband, Evan. Evan's a professional poker player. This guy's amazing. Dude, I, wanna, I need to learn some stuff. I suck. Singapore chili crab and pepper crab. You guys never had it? No. First time. Oh, oh, look. The service. Oh, yeah. That is a huge razor clam. Whoa, this is the biggest razor clam I've ever seen in my life. This might be the razor clam king. Oh, yeah. Covered in garlic like it should be. How is it? Delicious. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah? Yes. Nice one, though. If they recommend chicken soup usually, it's always going to be good. But it's so clear. That's really so flavorful. Clean. Slightly sweet. Yeah. That kind of threw me off a little bit. I don't expect chicken soup to be slightly sweet like this. Mm. And dirty looking. Our crab is here. Already? Oh, why is it so small? Right? So, you need to, like, seriously, I'm just gonna, like, I remember this. Get in there, dude. I know, so I just take a... Oh, my God. I should take a claw. That pepper sauce. Yeah, there you go. <gasps> How good is that? Oh, man. How good is it's that? It's delicious. It's right? so savory. Like it's not pepper? what I expected at all. I feel so barbaric, but I don't care. That's how you're supposed <laughs> to eat it. If you're not making a mess, you're doing it wrong. I miss this. <laughs> I didn't have this at the other place. This pepper sauce they have here, oh it's truly remarkable. Oh, that sauce, you can't replace that. Uh, we made our way to Xingji. <laughs> I tracked them for Hanani's chicken, but they're sold out. But they do have roast chicken. So we're gonna go eat some roast chicken. This is my first time not having Hainanese chicken because they were sold out, but this roast chicken is so bloody tender. Mm. Oh my god, it's so tender. Try this. Oh my This is. I I'm converting to roast chicken now at this place. Best, best chicken. I mean, the great thing about the roast chicken is you got that nice texture from the skin, too. Whereas the Hananese chicken is just very tender everywhere. Mm -hmm. This has more of a textural difference. Oh, I love it. It's so yummy. Ah, it's a good little swing roll. Goodbye, Singapore. I legit love this place. I really do. I'm so sad to leave every single time. This place in Japan, I always miss it. I'm gonna stay in this hotel from now on. This, this is gonna be my it hotel. This hotel is the cheaper one out of the Marriott chain that I used to stay with. And it's got the best view. So if you're curious, this is the Novena Courtyard. Nice hotel. Really, really nice. Although I haven't been home in like three weeks, I'm not going home. So next stop, Thailand. Let's go. That thing behind me, that dome looking thing, is called the Jewel. And it has like a bunch of crazy restaurants and waterfalls. I was gonna do it today, but completely ran out of time this morning. Next time I'm back. Greatest airport in the world. You walk in here, you don't even feel the anxiety and the sort of depression that you do when you walk into like a place like JFK or LaGuardia or most US airports. I've never done this before. There's a premier check-in lounge. So it's not just a counter, it's a whole lounge for business class. That's pretty cool. So you sit down, you check in, and then you have a private entrance. And you basically get to this door, and you're already on immigration. And that's it. My entire check-in process from going into the lounge to 
getting into the airport it took about less than 15 minutes and everybody's just most courteous and nice and they even have like a you sell that little machine rate the custom agent's attitude and time it couldn't even have that machine in the u.s because so many people would be pushing that angry face the machine would just explode anyway that check-in process like the whole you know private check-in here that's some crazy rich asian stuff of which i am not but it's nice to experience that every once in a while <gasps> what well that's not very crazy rich asian it's closed Opens at 10.25. My boarding is at like 11. Uh. The thing I love about Thai Airways is the color thing. I love purple. Not much of a leg room right there, but this is only like a three hour flight. So for food, there's a choice between green curry, stuffed chicken breast with parmesan, uh -uh, or stir-fried prawn and gulen chili sauce. Let's go for the green curry. Heading to Thailand, start switching everything to Thai food. I've really developed a love for uh, smoked salmon lately. No salmon and garlic bread. That's a spicy curry. Probably the spiciest food I had on any airline. This is a good preview of all the awesome Thai food that's to come. Sweet, creamy, spicy green curry. This was definitely the right choice. Can't wait to actually eat this in Thailand. Little coconut mochi ball. That is so good with some tea. Whatever that mochi ball was, I gotta find it when I get to Thailand. That's some of the best Thai dessert I've ever had. And I'm so excited to get there. I just had lunch, but already looking forward to dinner. I don't know why when I got off the plane, I was expecting this country to be cooler than Singapore. It is not. For some random reason, I was kind of expecting it. I was like, huh, finally a cooler place. Definitely not cooler, maybe hotter. On this trip, I was actually invited by the Thai Tourism Board. They wanted to take me to some of the cities that are not frequently visited. And that sounded awesome to me, really get into explore the local culture. I've been in Thailand for like 15 minutes, already got my first Jackie Chan comment. At least everybody likes me, or him. This is uh, T and Vic, we're meeting them. They're gonna take me around Thailand. Look at this, coconut toffee. Dried pineapple, dried mangoes. Mangoes are one of my favorite things in Thailand. Fresh mangoes in Asia. This right here. Oh, it's, it's like a dried banana sandwich. Yep. How cool is that? Mm. Sounds good. Mm, good. Rose tea. Ooh. That's very sour. There's a menu in here. I love, you, you guys know how much I love menus. It's my favorite reading material. Oh, this is so nice. Shortcut into the bedroom, which is also the living room. Wow. Again, they're serious about this Dorian thing. I actually really love Bangkok. I think Thai food is one of my favorite foods on the planet because so much of it is spicy. There's tons of noodles, there's tons of vinegar. And the last time I was really in Thailand was like three years ago. I don't know why I haven't been back um, really since then. I mean, I've been back once for like a, for the Chiang Mai trip, but this is gonna be such a fun food adventure. <gasps> they have menus. Let's look at the menu. The amazing Thailand YouTuber familiarization trip 2019. So tonight I go into a restaurant called are rustic basil leaf stir fry with beef one of my favorite Thai dishes 
Uh, sunny side up green curry grilled pork. Oh, man, this is gonna be awesome. Tomorrow is one full day in Bangkok. I think uh, going to two different places. The day after, we're hitting to Sukhap Thai. Never been there before. And roast duck and crispy pork is on the menu. <gasps> pig tongue stew. Fried pig livers. Sounds exotic. So day after that, we're gonna be still in Sukhap Thai. Then we're gonna go to Kong Kayan. And we're spending a couple of days there and back to Bangkok. This is so, so cool. Besides Bangkok, these are cities that I never probably would have gone if I was just traveling by myself. So I think I have some free time tomorrow night. Tomorrow night then, I'm heading back to the night market. That night market I've been wanting to go back to for years with that massive mountain of pork. Those of you guys who see my video from three years ago, massive mountain of chili and pork. I'm coming back for you, baby. And they gave me a couple of, it's like a little mini unboxing. Oh, it's a, it's a scale in case I need to weigh my luggage from all the souvenirs and food I'm gonna be stuffing into it. That's very unique, by the way. I don't think I've ever gotten one of these. What is, oh, no way. This is a international uh, converter, plug converter. I wish, man, I wish I knew I was getting one of these before I spent like 50 bucks. These are expensive. All right, I'm gonna go wash up and get ready for dinner. First restaurant I'm going to tonight, we took a car to a subway station because traffic in Bangkok is notorious, especially right now, this rush hour. The train's actually really nice here in this city. Here, grab your little token. Wow, oh, it's so pretty. This is the most beautiful station in Thailand. So this is the style with the, which the Royal Palace is, is, is built after, and they made the station like that. It's gorgeous. What I love about the subway here is that it's, everything's in English, you can get around really easily. I mean, it's clean, it's efficient. You don't have massive rats the size of cats like we do in New York running around. Seriously, the stations, the trains, everything is spotless here. And right behind us, as soon as you get out of the subway station, you're right here in front of the Museum of Siam. This just looks like a majestic mansion in the back. This is a really historical museum. It's gonna tell you like basically the entire history of Thailand. Really worth going if you're ever here. Right now on our way to dinner, passing by Wapol Temple. Gorgeous place. It's gonna have like great temples, like really majestic historic temples like this all over Bangkok. And last time I was here, I didn't really get to see this much because I was just concentrated on food, but so pretty, right? We're inside the temple and this is the reclining booth. This is massive. And here, if you wanna go in, you gotta take off your shoes, no hats, but luckily you can definitely bring cameras in and video, whatever you wanna do. This statue is more than 200 years old and just a little perspective. Here's me and there's the Buddha. This Buddha is 46 meters long, so about 151 feet. And the reason why it's kind of laying like this is it's supposed to represent the Buddha right, uh, right before he passes and enters Nirvana, enters like basically supersedes the six folded paths about to become enlightened. And this is something like I've always wanted to see ever since I was a kid and there it is, magical. And on the walls, you get stories of the Buddha's life. And actually, I shouldn't say the Buddha because um, there's actually many Buddhas. Buddha just signifies the level of an enlightened being. So there's never just one Buddha. This is the Temple of Dawn. Wat Arum in the back. This is from across the river. You know what I'm saying? You know? Chills. Even though it's hot here, chills. And we're going to dinner tonight right here. Urban Rustic Thai. So this restaurant serves rustic, authentic Thai cuisine, which is like comfort food, street food, kind of in a more modern twist. And this is really interesting. This was a chicken skin and you break it down and you pour homemade sriracha all over it. 
that's really good. If you've never had a chicken skin before, it's one of my favorite things fried. It becomes so crispy and literally, as soon as you punch down, completely melts in your mouth, leaving that slight burnt flavor. And there's sriracha, this is off the hook. I would buy this in bottles. This is literally like going to KFC or Popeyes or wherever and just eating the skin, which is the most flavorful part. And the great thing is it's not overly greasy, so you don't feel that sense of shame that you would after finishing like a whole bucket of chicken by yourself. I've had many uh, variations of chicken skin before in my life. That was my favorite with that homemade sriracha. All right, next, I feel like I need to cool down a little bit. And this is like, this is interesting. This is a watermelon seed salad. And it's like roasted watermelon seed, a little chili pepper, a little bit of herbs. One bite, and this is like distinctively Thai. A little vinegary, a lot of chilies. This is definitely not a relief if you're trying to use something that's gonna bring the heat down a little bit. And this is really interesting. Grilled rice cake. Basically a sticky rice lollipop. I feel like this needs some sort of dipping sauce, otherwise it does come off a little dry. But I do like the outside where it's really crunchy. It reminds me of like when I was a kid, we would always cook rice in pans, right? There's no rice cooker back then. And we would always fight over the bottom of the rice where it's all crispy and a little burnt. That's the best part. The outside of this definitely tastes like that. The inside, I feel like it just really needs to be dipped in something. Maybe this, this is my saute dipping sauce. I'll just dip this a little bit in here. That's not bad. Probably not the best combo because I feel like this needs to be dipped in something. Oh, I know. There's a roast pork dish. These are stewed pork ribs and pork belly. Oh my God. If this doesn't belong rice, I don't think anything does. That's amazing. It tastes exactly what I think it was gonna taste like. It actually provides a little relief from the heat. It's not spicy at all. You can tell this thing has been stewed forever. Tender, super, super tender meat. That fat just renders as soon as it touches your tongue. You get that nice little herb flavor from the star anise. This is definitely a good place to dip this grilled rice cake. Oh yeah. And you get that nice slight char from the out, on the outside of the rice. It captures all that nice fat and rich pork flavor in the rice popsicle. I should try one of these. Mmm. Grilled pork with a slight caramelized flavor on the outside with that sugar burnt a little bit. And this is the dipping sauce for the skewer. Although it really doesn't need it. It tastes really good on its own already. Oh my God. Yeah, go ahead and add that dipping sauce. And then eat it with a bit of rice. There's so many different types of flavor with every single bite. Savory, sweet, slight bitterness from the char, and the aroma. Oh, that's where it gets you. That thing is roasted so well. All that great smoky flavor just releases as soon as you sink your teeth into that meat. And the sauce, a little garlic, tons of chilies, a little vinegar. Sour, sweet, makes it complete. This is an egg salad. The egg is like fried into a little pouch. Oh my God. So it's fried outside. Oh, all that oozy yolk. It's just trapped in the middle like an eggy cocoon. Again, sauce, chilies, vinegar, typical Thai ingredients. Never get sick of that. That's one of the craziest egg dishes I've ever had. I want this egg to show up on my plate every single breakfast from now until forever. The outside chewy fried shell of an egg. It kind of tastes like almost like a tofu. So making my way through all these dishes. This is exactly how I imagined my first day in Thailand would be. Green chili. Had a version of this on the plane. First bite of curry, whenever I'm in Thailand, just always stuns me. Subtly sweet, wonderfully aromatic. And you know you're in Thailand when you find a chicken claw 
and your green chicken curry. Also the spice level. There ain't no mild setting in this country. Everything is designed to burn you in a very good way. The basil, the sweet coconut milk, just a perfect complement with my rice. I've never had a chicken claw in my green curry before. Mmm, obviously, this is not for everybody. You gotta like, that took me a while to be okay with that, you know, sucking on chicken's toes. But now after years of doing it, I definitely have a chicken foot fetish. This is one of my favorite Thai dishes ever. Spicy Thai basil with beef. This thing is relatively simple. It's a stir fry with Thai basil, garlic, little chili peppers, and trust me guys, this is gonna burn. It's gonna be so good, but it's gonna burn. All those little chilies. I haven't met a version of this dish I didn't like. Another one of these fried eggs. They put it inside the Thai basil. Making it ever slightly so creamy. This kind of looks like a meat popsicle with peanuts stuck on it. What in God's name is this? This is scary good. Now, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be a little acquired flavor because of how vinegary it is. This is one of the most outrageous things I ever had. It's like a really vinegary pork rice combo popsicle thingy. That's like the best way I can describe it. It's gelatinous, you can taste the rice, so it's a little sticky. It's basically the sticky rice is holding the pork together. And the name of the dish is cured pork because they ferment the pork. Now, you don't taste um, the fermentation. You really just taste the vinegar that's added in there. So it could be a little overwhelming to some people. Again, I grew up eating vinegar. I love it. That's really good for me. Favorite thing tonight is probably, man, these skewers. These skewers and the crazy fried eggs. This is really interesting dishes because a lot of these dishes I've had already and they're done really well. And I'll be the first to admit, like I'm not completely familiar with traditional Thai cuisine. Like I know the basic curries, the basic noodles, but this is what I love. Like trying stuff that, especially traditional dishes I never had before. Like that's what makes me really happy going to a place. Like finding new food items to completely fall in love with. And I feel like Thai cuisine is one of those where there's just so many different variety of foods and dishes. And, and that's why like these trips that where I get invited to a country, it doesn't happen um, all that often. But if countries will offer me like just like a local look onto a country or local taste of a country, that's what really appeals to me, like the Uzbekistan trip, that was amazing. And now this trip is getting off to a great start. I can't wait to explore Thailand deeper. I feel like I, for some reason, just kind of glossed over it. Like I didn't even think about coming back here and, and going to different cities. I've only been to two cities in Thailand. Anyway, that's what this trip is. We're gonna fix all that. Oh, that's good. Now, hotel, workout, and bed. Oh, finally back home. I don't get sick often. I feel like I'm coming down with something today. I'm still gonna work out and maybe go to bed early. I can't be sick. I got a week in Thailand left. All right, gotta go to bed. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.